welcome to another of our online reflection for learning activities. We put these videos together so that if you're teaching um, in lockdown or in some other in online environment, um, you've got some resources that you can use to bring reflective practice into your classes. Um, today's exercise is called clearing a space. It's a, it's a small little practice that comes from Eugene Gendlin's work on, uh, on focusing and on um, uh, on experiential learning. And I'll uh, just dive in and lead you into it. So if you could just all um, just pause, be silent, just with yourself. Take a, take a moment or two to relax, or even a little bit more than a moment. So take some time to just relax and relax. And, and when you're ready, just pay attention uh, inwardly perhaps in your body, um, uh, in your stomach, in, perhaps in your stomach or your chest, anywhere that feels, um, feels, feels like a, a kind of an interior place with a bit of a lightness for you. And when you've kind of relaxed and settled into that, being aware in an inward way, just ask yourself, how is my day going? What's the, what's the main thing for me right now? Usually when we ask questions like that, words come quite quickly from our kind of talky mindy things. But we're asking for something a little different here. We're looking for a sort of a bodily response, a somatic response. So how is my day going? Like, how does it feel? You know, comfortable, uncomfortable, excited, interesting, bland, slow. Uh, whatever it might be. So just take your time to be with being here right now inwardly and see what comes in your body as an answer to the question, how is my day going? When something comes, it might be a concern or it might be just an awareness, don't, for this exercise, don't go inside it. Just stand back and say, hmm, yes, it's here. And allow it to be there with a bit of distance, a comfortable distance between you and it. And when you've kind of relaxed enough into you being here and this thing being in the space around nearby or at some distance, just go back into your body and just check again and see, well, what else is there? What else is there that comes when I ask, how is my day going? And when something comes, again, just don't go inside, just acknowledge it and say, okay, this is here too. And allow that to be present with you as well. Usually there's a few things going on. So just take your time to check inwardly and look for again, what your body is kind of pointing out to you or kind of bringing to you what your stomach is suggesting, what your, what your chest is suggesting, yeah, something like that. As we're kind of checking out the body's agenda in a way. Or maybe we'll say the whole person, the body-mind. And as you put things in the space around you, just take the time to relax and be aware that um, you can be here with everything that's relevant to your day without actually diving inside and taking them anywhere. And um, if any of them is full, then just take a bit of time and enjoy, enjoy a little breathing space. So you can just re relax and be present without currently having to take anything forward just for now. And when you feel ready, you can just um, come back into our collective space, our conversational space. So this is an exercise that comes out of Jenlin's work. And um, I asked the question, how is my day going? But if you're in class, you could ask, how is, my, how is the class going? Um, if you're working on a project, how is the project going? You could adapt it in lots of different directions. And you can also move forward from here 
um, to explore uh, ways of working creatively with whatever has emerged for you. So if you want to take your day forward or your project forward or whatever it might be. If you do it, if you ask how's my class going, you could function a little bit like this point exercise, which is um, in, the, uh, in the handbook. So just had any obligation, would anybody like to make any sort of reflections on their experience of doing this? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to. Um, yeah, go for it, Kat. Yeah. What I was most conscious of was the, the roller coaster of emotion that you go through uh, throughout the day. And I think about it if I went back to this morning and where my day started and then what I got involved with, and constantly going in and out of different um, things like anxiety and then uh, rushing and then all sorts of things that were going on. And you're so when you become aware of them it's it's not that they disappear it's just you, you do realize you can handle them in a better way when you're conscious of what's happening to you mm. that was um that's what came up for me no that's great that's lovely i mean um Jenlin is looking to support is uh letting us be more be aware enough aware of our background feelings our background experiences so that they uh, we have that kind of, like you're just saying, that kind of reflecting, reflective space, which gives you a bit more flexibility and a bit more freedom. And it's not about fixing things, but it does kind of create opportunities for working in slightly different ways. So this is a good exercise to not expect people to say anything with, because you just don't know what might have come up. So um, on that note, let's move forward and I'll just link it back into our... Um, so it's a, it's a practice that comes from um, Gendlin's book, uh, Focusing. Um, the words on the slide are very close to the words in the actual book. So it, it really is very close to his path. Um, there is another practice of Gendlin's called Feeling Meaning in, uh, um, or based on Gendlin's work in the... Uh, in the Reflection for Learning Scholarly Practice Guide. So if you want a bit more background on his work, you can get it there. Um, you can also Google it, Google it, of course. And um, it is worth being aware that it's a kind of a, it's a useful practice for checking in and what you choose as your topic makes a big difference. The default version for Gendlin is to talk about um, uh, how is my life going, which is a rather potentially big and heavy question and appropriate for some purposes. It's enormously less um, um, uh, less less scope for a bit for for alarming things. If you ask something like, "So, how does this how does this little exercise we did in class go? How does this topic sitting with you?" So you can scale it up and you can scale it right down depending on what it is you're doing with with your class. But unless you've got people who are kind of into, into experiential learning, it well, generally makes sense to pick something fairly low key for people, I think. Because uh, what's really useful about it is it teaches that awareness of um, being able to be present with what's going on without having to feel engaged to fix things up or to sort out problems. It just gives you a bit of breathing space. And from there, you can move more flexibly. So good background on this practice and others um, in the guide. And dot, dot, dot. If you try it out or any of our other exercises, um, please uh, please let us know by sending us an email at reflection4lc at gmail.com as per the slide. We'd be delighted to hear um, what your experience is with this and how you use it and adapt it or whatever. <laughs>